Let's continue our uh, study of inequalities by solving uh, inequalities that require multiplication and division. So the tool that's going to allow us to solve these inequalities is a very similar tool uh, to the one that we use to solve equations. And that is that we have this uh, property called um, the multiplication property of inequality and the division property of inequality. And right now we're just focusing on positive numbers. And so what these things say is, if you have an inequality, right, like 7 is less than 12, which is true, if you multiply both sides of that inequality by a number, say 3, the new inequality that you get is still true. That's what the multiplication property says. It says you can multiply both sides of an inequality by the same number, and the inequality is still true, like 21 is less than 36. It also works for division. Remember, we're dealing with positive numbers here. If we start out with 15 is less than 35, we divide both sides by 5. The new inequality that we get is 3 is less than 7, which is also true. So these two properties are going to allow us to multiply and divide by the same number on both sides of an inequality to help us solve it. In other words, we're going to use our inverse operations. So I'll show you how we use these properties to solve inequalities. Here we have an inequality that says 3x, 3 times x, is greater than negative 27. We're trying to find solutions for x, right? Numbers that we can plug in for x that make this inequality true. Now we can brainstorm a few of them probably if we think uh, for a while, but to zero in on, a, on an exact set of solutions, we really want to use our inverse operations. So we know that this sort of uh, let greater than symbol divides our inequality into two sides, and that multiplication property of inequality says we are allowed to divide both sides by the same number, in this case 3, and isolate our variable x. So I end up with x is greater than whatever negative 27 divided by 3 is. Turns out that is negative 9. So the solutions to my inequality are all of the numbers that are greater than negative 9. And from here, you know how we handle this. We draw a nice horizontal number line with evenly spaced tick marks and we'll use a graph to represent these solutions. Please be very careful when you're numbering a number line on the negative side. Sometimes your brain plays tricks on you. This particular number line, if I put negative 9 near the middle, remember the positive numbers are in this direction, so I would count negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, and so on, up towards 0. And then to the left side, this is where the negative numbers are, the more negative numbers. Negative 10, negative 11, negative 12, and so on. You know how this works. We look at the inequality, which is a greater than symbol. I'm going to put an open circle at negative 9, which is my boundary number. I don't fill it in because it's not greater than or equal to. It's just greater than. Negative 9 itself is not a solution because it's not bigger than negative 9. And then you know how this works. I make a really obnoxious or almost nearly obnoxious arrow that I shade in above my... or not above, but right over the top of my number line, uh, above all of the solutions that work. Negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, and all of the other numbers that are bigger than negative 9. So this should feel pretty familiar, right? We're just using inverse operations, in this case division, dividing by 3, in order to solve the inequality. Uh, hold on, I'm having a little problem here. I was going to write inverse operations and I failed miserably. There I go again. Um, I've said it. I would like to write it. Here we go. <laughs> okay. 
So it took me a while, but I was able to actually write inverse operations on the slide here. That's the deal. Now all of the problems that we'll work on for this particular discussion will either require multiplication or division. Okay? Let's try another one. So this particular inequality says 2 thirds times m, or 2 thirds m, is less than or equal to 6. In case it's been a while since you've solved equations with fractions, when that coefficient is a fraction, um, our strategy is to multiply by the reciprocal. Right? Instead of dividing by 2 thirds, we're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 over 2. And the idea is that when we do that, you know, these cancel to 1. If you multiply that side by 3 halves, you also, you also have to multiply this side by 3 halves. And, of course, this is going to require you to know how to multiply a whole number times a fraction. Um, I'm going to do a little uh, scratch work over here on the side. Uh, the long version is that this is 6 over 1 times 3 over 2. Uh, we can cross-cancel the 6 and the 2, and this becomes 3 over 1 times 3 over 1, which is 6 over 1, or better known as 6. Now nah, that can't be right. Uh, 9. <laughs> That's better. 3 times 3 is 9, not 6. Come on, man. Okay, so the inverse operation is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, our solutions, our m is less than negative 9, or less than 9. m is less than 9. That's a whole bunch of numbers, and we will represent that. Oh, goodness. We will represent that with a number line graph. Draw a horizontal number line with evenly spaced tick marks. We're going to try and put 9 near the center. Number it correctly, 10, 11, 12, because the higher numbers are over on this side, and 8, 7, 6, because the lower numbers are over on the left-hand side. Let's do this one in green. Uh, this is less than or equal to 9. So our boundary marker is a solid dot, because 9 is less than or equal to 9. It's equal. So it's part of the solution set. And then all these other numbers down here, you know how this goes, you're probably tired of hearing me talk about my obnoxious green arrow and the fact that this infinite set can be represented by this graph. But that's the deal, all right? We use inverse operations. When we're asked to shade these in, we shade them in, and we've got a picture of this. This was the big deal here. Multiplying by 3 over 2. That is the inverse operation for a coefficient that's a fraction. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. So most of these problems are going to feel familiar. We're either going to divide both sides by the same number, or in this case, multiply both sides by the same number. There is one huge catch, though, and we need to discuss that. So let's take a look. So this, these multiplication and division properties of inequality are actually pretty useful. We can use the inverse operations to solve inequalities, but there is a huge catch, as I mentioned. Consider this inequality. I hope you'll agree that 5 is less than 8. But watch what happens if I multiply both sides by a negative number. Let's multiply both sides by negative 2. I'm allowed to do that. The multiplication property says I can do it. But look what happens to the values. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. If I keep that less than symbol in here, this statement is no longer true. Negative 10 is not less than negative 16. So I went from a true statement to a false statement. In order to keep it true, I have to flip it around. Because as you know, negative 10 is actually greater than negative 16. So that's going to be our little catch. 
When we multiply or divide by a negative, we're going to have to flip the inequality around. Okay? Let's make it official. So we're going to officially discuss the multiplication and division properties of inequality. And we're going to focus on the negative numbers this time. Just like we showed in my last example, when you multiply both sides by a negative, if you don't flip that inequality around, you won't end up with a true statement. And that's all that this, this little uh, know it notes is showing us. It's showing us that whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, as soon as you do it, you have to flip that symbol over. All right. Let's try a couple of examples. So here's a standard multiplication inequality. Negative 8 times x is greater than 72. Just like with equations, we're going to use our inverse operations. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8. And as soon as I do that, this inequality has to change because that negative changes which one is greater. So these still cross out, right? They cancel. I end up with x, but this time I'm going to change it to less than 72 divided by negative 8 is negative 9. So what we're saying is the only numbers that will make that inequality true are numbers that are less than negative 9. I'm just going to test it out before we draw this graph. Let's say that we put a negative 10 in for x. Here I've indicated that in blue. Negative 8 times negative 10, which is the value I'm putting for x. Is that still greater than 72? And the answer is, of course it is. This is positive 80. And 80 is greater than 72. So the numbers that we've indicated in our solution are absolutely right. Anything less than negative 9 is going to work. Negative 10 is one example, but it'll work for any number less than negative 9. So let's go ahead and graph this. We can't list them all, but we can certainly put it on a number line graph. Remember, be very careful when you're numbering the negative end of a number line. The numbers get more negative when you go left. Okay, what do we got? Less than, that's an open circle. Shade in to the left, because these are the numbers that are less than negative 9. And shade it in, borderline obnoxious, so I know exactly where the solutions are. So that wasn't so bad. The key is, and please remember, when you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. Okay? You flip that symbol before you start writing your solutions. So let's take a look at one last inequality. This one's pretty crazy. It's got lots of negatives, and the x variable is on the wrong side of the inequality. You know how that makes me feel. So I'm going to immediately switch this thing. Remember, when you're flipping over an inequality, you have to change the inequality symbol. So this becomes x over negative 5 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Now, this is x divided by negative 5, so the inverse operation for solving this is going to be to multiply by negative 5 on both sides. And remember, as soon as I do that, I've got to switch this inequality again. These negative 5's cancel, and I now have x is less than or equal to, because I have to flip it back, positive 15, because negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. So as long as I put a number that's less than or equal to positive 15 in for x, that statement above will be true. Once we figure out our solution, we can graph it on a number line. 
Remember, this is a positive 15, so just be careful with your numbers. 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, what's this side? 14, 13, 12, etc. We are less than or equal to. So I put a solid dot on my boundary, which is 15. I'm shading the less than numbers. That's the ones to the left. And this arrow is going to be borderline obnoxious. In fact, even saying it so many times has started to become annoying and obnoxious. But hopefully it will help you remember that this is what we're expecting to see. Okay. So that's about as challenging a problem as you're going to have today. right? We're only doing one inverse operation. In this case, the operation was to multiply by negative 5. But we had to actually flip our inequality twice. Once to get the variable in the right place and a second time because we multiplied by a negative number. Let's take a look at an application. So it turns out Ryan has a $16 gift card for a health store where a smoothie costs $2.50 with tax. That, that's another way of saying $2.50 each. What are the possible numbers of smoothies that Ryan can buy? Okay, so we're going to write an, an inequality, and we're going to see if we can figure out what the possible numbers of um, smoothies that Ryan can buy are. So here it goes. Uh, we're going to, let's see, he's got $16, and each smoothie costs $2.50. So that's going to be 2.5 times x, where x is my number of smoothies. And he can spend up to, but not more than, $16. So he's less than or equal to 16 So I've translated the story about Ryan's gift card into a math inequality. Right? Now I need an inverse operation to solve this thing. So I'm going to divide by 2.5. Now again, I'm not going to panic. First of all, the 2.5s on this side will cancel anyway. So I end up with x is less than or equal to. And then I need to know what the answer to 2.5, or 16, uh, 16 divided by 2.5. I need to know what that answer is. I'm going to use a calculator for that. Bing, bang, boom. Beep, beep, beep. And I come up with 6.4. Okay, the solution to my inequality is x is less than or equal to 6.4. Now here's where we need to be a little smarter than we are with our regular inequality problems. The question says, what are the possible numbers of smoothies that Ryan can buy? So my solution says x is less than 6.4. So I need to write down the smoothies that Ryan can buy. I'm going to write Ryan can buy. Well, he could buy zero, he could buy one, he could buy two, he could buy three, he could buy four, he can buy five, or he can buy six smoothies. Notice these are just integers. Because when you go to the health store to buy a smoothie, you can't really buy half a one or two-tenths of a smoothie or a third of a smoothie. You could buy six, you could buy five, you can buy four, you can buy three, you can buy two, you can buy one, you can buy zero. But those are the only choices. If we were going to represent this on a number line, Rather than drawing an arrow, what we would do is we would put dots on all the possibilities. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are the only values that satisfy this application. This is a finite set. It's not infinite. And what you need to know about this is that this graph is called discrete.
when your only possible answers are integers or whole numbers, you're going to get a discrete graph when you can't use fractions or decimals. And the way you indicate that is by just plotting a dot on, by, on all the possible choices. So Ryan can buy between 0 and 6 smoothies. Right? That's another way to say this. The graph here is a way to show that it's only those discrete values. It's not every number between 0 and 6. And it's certainly not negatives. If you consider this solution here, x is less than or equal to 6.4, you could say negative 2.5, right? That'd be a solution. But that number doesn't make sense with this problem. So as you answer these stories, make sure that after you get your inequality, that you're only choosing the numbers that actually make sense with your problem. You're going to have to think it out a little bit. Oftentimes, these are discrete answers. They're integers, where you just put the dots. You don't shade the whole thing. Okay, so I think I've talked enough about this for a while. Let's try some inequalities where we use multiplication and division to solve them, and we'll see where that gets us. Good luck.